You might as well have retitled this Nick Fury's Worst Week Possible because, my God, I feel so bad for Nick Fury. Like, and this really was the biggest example of what if. Whereas with last week's episode with T'Challa, it was a fun what if that I'm always kind of down for. I love those kinds of what if. But this is the kind of what if story that I'm the most used to. It's a what if where so many characters just die in the most unceremonious ways. And it's just, it's probably the most realistic depiction where it's just like, yeah, in the real world, you wouldn't really live that long, especially if you're this high profile. But man, the bodies piled up left and right. It was amazingly sad. Now, it starts off basically in the middle of Iron Man 2. Nick Fury and Natasha Romanoff are going to see Tony when he's suffering from the whole situation with his arc reactor. He's being poisoned. Natasha comes up to inject the thing to help stabilize him for a little bit. But instead of him being okay, you know, for a little bit longer, he dies. He bites it right then and there. And, you know, um, Natasha isn't voiced by Scarlett Johansson, especially now, not after the whole situation with the lawsuit and all that. However you feel about that, yeah, she, she ain't coming back for that. But it was a pretty good replica of that voice actor, of that actor, I should say. But she ends up getting full-on arrested for that because, uh, I mean, it's the only explanation. She had to have tampered with it or something since she was the one who went to administer it. So she gets taken off by Brock Rumlow, Crossbones and all that while he was still a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Um, Nick Fury gives her something in order to analyze what might have happened Basically, the syringe she was supposed to inject Stark with so it can be analyzed outside of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because he thinks that maybe it might have been an inside job. So, naturally, she escapes from the lockup convoy in a pretty intense fight scene. Like, she's, she's punching these dudes so repeatedly in the face, it is ridiculous. And so, she escapes. Meanwhile, the events of the first Thor take place the following day. Apparently, a lot of events... Avengers movies took place within the span of a week. So apparently around that time we would have had the events of Thor 1 because they have the whole situation where Coulson goes to view Mjolnir but Fury also ends up being there because of the whole situation going down. There, He's also there with Barton. Thor does his infiltration thing, gets towards the hammer. We have the whole moment where Hawkeye's like, should I take the shot? And of course Fury's telling him no, only for 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 some reason, Barton lets his arrow rip, and it just, boom, kills Thor. Right then and there, just out of the blue. And, like, Barton is so taken aback, because he's just like, but, but I don't slip. I, I didn't do it on purpose. I, I wasn't trying to fire the shot. And Barton is just so out of sorts because of it. And so he ends up getting arrested as well. And when Fury tries to go into his cell to question him, Barton's just suddenly dead. In a locked room, in a locked cell that had no ways in aside from when Coulson and Fury tried to go in. And Barton is just dead right there on the floor and I'm just like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck is going on? Meanwhile, Natasha has tracked down Betty Ross who is not voiced by Liv Tyler. So who knows if we're ever going to see actual Betty Ross again. Maybe in the She-Hulk series. I don't know if that's been confirmed or not. But she tracks down Betty Ross because Betty Ross knows how to do things off of the grid. And it's also kind of a way of warning Bruce because she knows that they're still in contact with each other up until this point. Honestly, it's at the same campus that Betty Ross was at in the Incredible Hulk movie. And so she's trying to get Betty Ross to analyze the syringe. And Betty Ross does inspect. And it's just like, yeah, this didn't even pierce his skin. It looks like something broke off the tip or some crap. Only for General Thunderbolt Ross to show up with the entirety of his army out of nowhere 
as Natasha had figured out that Bruce was also there, like hiding out in a closet, but Ross has come for him, and Natasha and Bruce try to make a bit of an escape. There's a bit of a standoff with General Ross where they're just like, don't shoot, don't shoot. And then all of a sudden a shot goes off into Bruce's arm and then he hulks out, goes on a bit of a rampage. And then for some reason, out of nowhere, he suddenly explodes. And, you know, Ross was at a complete loss because none of his men said that they shot. And it's just like, where did that shot go off of? And at this point, I'm starting to get a little bit of an idea because it's just like, Okay, some unseen enemy is doing something. Bruce just exploding out of nowhere? How would that even happen? But Nick Fury has his own situation to deal with as Loki and a battalion of the Asgardians show up wanting retribution for the death of Thor. And Nick Fury convinces them to give him until, I think it was sunrise or sunset the next day. It, I think it was sunset the next day, maybe. No, uh, sunrise. I think it was sunrise. I remember thinking it was very unreasonable the amount of time he was given. And so he's hanging out with, Nick Fury is hanging out with Coulson. Natasha has a bit of an inclination as to what happened and is doing a little bit of research because it's obvious they're taking out people who would have been for Fury's Avengers Initiative. Natasha is going through all of the files on the Avengers Initiative before she's attacked by this unseen assailant and she's just being thrown around left, right, and center by someone who seems to be invisible. And at this point, I'm just like, okay, I'm pretty sure I know who it is, but I don't know why. And as Natasha is almost killed right in that instant, she managed to get a call off and says that hope is the key. It's all about hope. And that message is sent to Fury before she's killed off. And I'm just like, okay, I definitely know who it is, but why? Like, what does hope mean? And when Fury gets the call, I forget what he's looking at, but something triggers in his mind. He goes off to where the Destroyer is stationed, where the Asgardians came back down before, tells him I need to talk to your boss. Next thing we know, he's at a grave site. I think he was looking off towards um, the graves because they're in San Francisco, where uh, a lot of the Ant-Man stuff took place. And so he's at a grave site, and it's the grave of Hope Van Dyne, Hank and Janet's daughter. And then up comes Hank Pym in the Yellow Jacket outfit. And I'm just like, yo, it's Hank Pym as Yellow Jacket. It finally came full circle. And apparently, in this world, the decision that was made was that Hope went off and joined S.H.I.E.L.D. And she was killed in the line of duty. And... Hank, you know, because now at this point he's lost both his wife and his daughter, apparently, although we know his wife is actually still around. He's furious at Fury, feeling that Fury betrayed him, because we know that Hank, he's had a vendetta against various people within S.H.I.E.L.D. for the longest time. And he tends to have a bit of an anger issue, but, you know, they've taken him full uh, the neurotic Hank Pym direction. And he's in the Yellow Jacket outfit, which means he probably funded Darian Cross's operation that he was against in the original Ant-Man. And he's gone after Fury, ready to take him down because he's like the last person who's involved in the Avengers and Initiative. And Fury's just like, you killed all of them? Barton, Widow, Hulk, all of them? And he's just like, yeah, we see the various different ways that he did it, from entering into Stark's bloodstream to make his situation worse, which killed him off, to hitting Barton's finger so he let the arrow go and kill Thor, to entering into Barton's head, pretty much killing him from the inside out, to entering into Hulk's bloodstream and sending something into his heart, which overloaded him. I just think, I think he overloaded him with gamma, gamma energy in such a way that he just exploded. He went pop, which was pretty grody. And then he just beat Nadasha to death. Like, Nadasha probably got the worst way to go out. It seemed like he just beat her to death. And now he's come for Fury, but as he goes in to take Fury down, Fury is just like, 
smacking him away left, right, and center, doing all these flips and tricks and weird bits of agility, and it's just like, oh, guys, something's up here. And then it's revealed to be Loki who is digging around with him. And so it's revealed that Loki and Fury had teamed up in order to take Hank down. And so they do so pretty handedly, especially with the casket of Ancient Winters. And so Hank is taken away by the Asgardians because he promised Loki and the Asgardians their pound of flesh for the death of Thor. However, when Fury is ready to see Loki off, Loki has another idea in mind, and then we find out the next day he's basically taking over the entirety of the world. Like, it took him around a day to conquer the entirety of the world, just with the Asgardian army. It, that is so surreal. And the last scene of things is Fury and Coulson just mourning the loss of potentially all of the Avengers, but Fury isn't down and out yet as he heads off to an unknown location, and then we find out it's the place where Steve went down, and he finds where Steve was frozen in the ice, and oh, something I had actually forgotten was the fact that he at one point was ready to call in Captain Marvel to deal with the whole situation, but he decided not to. But here we find out he ultimately ended up calling her as she comes down and is just like, okay, what do you need, Fury? And at least things are in a, under a little bit better of circumstances. I think at most it's only been like around like 15 years since they last saw each other at that point. But not voiced by Brie Larson. Not at all. But everybody else was pretty much voiced by their actual actors and all that good stuff, which is pretty nice. You know, I'm glad that Samuel L. Jackson had such a fun role, but man, so much went wrong here. Ultimately, it's not going to be the Avengers, it's going to be the two captains trying to rebel against the forces of Loki, see if they can actually do anything against all that. I mean, Captain Marvel, probably. Captain America, probably. But, <laughs> like, this world just really went to pot. It's funny, too, because you see Owatu... It seems like with each episode, you can see Owatu in the background just watching things a lot more often. It's a lot more clear when he's just out there in the sky watching. It's just like, it used to be moments where you're just like, you blink and you'll miss that he's out there. Where it's a little hard to make out that he's there. You know, and a lot of the scenes here, it's just like, oh. Man, you you just up there watching, you creep. But this this was a fun enough episode. But it, it's why I don't tend to read a lot of what ifs because so many characters just die in the most unceremonious ways. It's not even out in a blaze of glory. It's just like boop, they dead, and it's just like oh, okay. Dang. So this definitely wasn't one of my favorites, but it was a fun enough bit of what if -er It's just like, what if Hank Pym just went ape shit? And it was like, what if Hank Pym killed the Avengers? It's always a lot simpler than you would think it would be. And, you know, it tends to kind of be the case. It's just like a lot of these guys don't die off because of plot armor. You know, there's a thousand different ways you could actually kill these guys. It's just that the villains usually don't think about it despite the fact that they have incredible power at their fingertips. Or there's some BS reason that it doesn't happen. But, you know, in what if stories, it's just like, hey, hey everybody's on the chopping block basically but tell me your thoughts on what i will continue to call fury's worst week ever <laughs> and let me know whose death was your favorite what did you think about crazy old hank pym killing the avengers did you enjoy it did you hate it i can't wait to hear from you and if you like this video please like comment subscribe hit the bell icon for notifications until next time i've been doing this then and i will see you later Bye bye <laughs>